welcome, and it's the PHNX Cardinals podcast, your premier Arizona Cardinal podcast. Like and subscribe. Leave us a five-star Johnny Venerable Bobrock in studio live at the PHNX headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Game week on a football Friday as the Arizona Cardinals head to where Bobrock, San Francisco to take on the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, one of the unbeaten teams in the NFL. Cardinals coming off a dub, and that's all that matters. Like opening up division play against the hated San Francisco 49ers. If you can't get up for this game, uh, you probably don't have a pulse. I'd like to gut some people on San Francisco. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. We're going to get to our gut meter later on. Oh, but, Bo Brock, you were at practice today. Mm -hmm. You're out there at like 6 a.m. on the Cardinal facility, it felt like. And you got the scoop. And there's some injury concerns with this Cardinal team. Yeah, there absolutely is. I mean, the defensive line for a third consecutive week, fourth consecutive week, I guess, or fourth player in three weeks on the defensive line is going to miss time. Like Jonathan Gannon confirmed that Jonathan Ledbetter is out with what's just a finger injury, at least on the injury report. Wouldn't get too much into it. He's hoping that he's going to be available in week five. But the Cardinals are down some more beef on the defensive line. Carlos Watkins, IR. LJ Collier, IR, and now Jonathan Ledbetter, who's played such great football as an undrafted guy out of Georgia that's really kind of finding himself in this Nick Rollis defense. Unfortunately, he's down. We talk about it all the time. We talked about it on audio only last night, Johnny. You know, it's it's a group that couldn't stand to lose anybody, and they continue to lose a guy week in and week out. I don't know what the deal is. Now, is it his hand? What's going on with Ledbetter? Is it a lower body injury? Haven't seen him. Just haven't seen him. It, so on That's the, a bad sign. On the injury report, it's a finger. But we see, you know, it's not all hand finger injuries are the same. Chris Barnes is out there trying to gut it out. He's got it, his hand wrapped. We'll see what his availability is. I, I know that, you know, he was on the sideline of practice today. Big wrap, bulky hand uh, wrap going on there. But he's, you know, hitting the sled, seeing, you know, how it impacts him, what the results are that. And he's, he's sitting there with Nick Rollis and JG, and they're paying close attention to him before even letting him out there on the practice field. He's officially questionable uh, that's not the a bigger loss, though, I think, than Jonathan Ledbetter. Yeah. Because it, it it's as far as notoriety, proven commodities on the defensive line. Name me one. Lucky uh, Foto? Lucky Foto is going to play. I have to play one of his better games as a, as a pro. And we talked about it yesterday. I like, is Cameron Thomas going to play some defensive tackle? Maybe they sign this kid, a uh, local product, right? I would imagine Lopez. he's going to be active and, and throw him out there. But, I mean... You know, everything had been going really well from an injury standpoint, say for Buda Baker. Now it's starting to pile up for a position, as you mentioned, Bob Brock. The Cardinals just could not afford to lose. It was already, you know, with lack of a better term, respectfully, their least talented group to begin with. Yeah. And now it's like kind of dumpster diving, for lack of a better term, <laughs> onto practice squads and looking around the NFL to sign some people. And it, again, if this was, I don't know, a full bag, if this is, you know, a second or third tier position ranking on an NFL roster, I wouldn't be as concerned about it, right? Maybe like your third string inside linebacker. It's your starting defensive line against the San Francisco team that is the most effective in running the football in the entire NFL. Like we talked about it tongue in cheek on Wednesday. Christian McCaffrey to score an anytime touchdown with our friends at BetMGM, minus 300 this week, right? That that may go down to about minus 500 by the time kickoff rolls around. So it, you know, everything that I'm seeing on the Twitter streets, masterful job by Rallis and Gannon against Dallas. They've been tremendous, save for two quarters in the second half against the Giants. If they can somehow figure out a way to not let San Francisco run wild, given that the talent level right now on this defensive line is is lacking, it, it will be coach of the year kind of stuff. Because I, I just, you have to have the bodies to compete. Mm -hmm. You can't hide a defensive line. No, you, you can't. And you're going to have to get real creative in the rotation. And even when when guys are given their opportunity, they, they just have to play their role. And I think they've done a good job of doing that, yeah. right? But you can only take so many hits, like you said. You're dumpster diving. You're in the, you're in the uh, the the DVD bargain bin at Walmart. No, and you're no, like, hey, too well. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's watch this on Friday night. Roadhouse it's, too. <laughs> then it's Roadhouse too, <laughs> and you're turning it off because the performances aren't there's up no, to snuff. Right? There's no Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Who right? the hell was playing the lean Roadhouse too? Uh, times were tough, just like the Cardinal <laughs> defensive line. It's the Cardinals defensive line is straight to DVD. That's what it's called. So it's, it's it's straight to DVD. It's those free movies Amazon Prime offers. That's the status of the Cardinal defensive line. If you had to guess right now, the starting defensive line, if they do, let's say, a three-man front, maybe do, yep. do a 3-4 look, Zayvon Collins is going to play. We're going to talk about that. The, mm -hmm. the edge rushers are okay. 
But the three front defensive <laughs> linemen, who would you say those are going to be? Could you even name three of them? Uh, I think, it, you know, at the nose, it's Lecky. Mm-hmm. And then you probably mix in Kevin Strong. That Okay, he'll yeah. be around. And then depending on who they elevate, is it going to be, you know, an Eric Banks or is it going to be a Ben Stilley? Okay. Or Kev- Roy Lopez. But I think Roy Lopez probably would be back up to a Lecky at nose. At least Kevin Strong and Eric Banks have, like, been around the NFL. And they don't they don't ask their defensive line to do that much. That's mm-hmm. why it's like when the Cardinals missed JJ Watt, I mean he was their entire defensive line at times, right? And, and Dante still that you could put in that rotation. I so if, if you're asking me like who their five are, because JG has said they like that they like to have five. It's gonna be faux two strong, no doubt about it. Stills, I think, is absolutely in that conversation. And then you probably elevate a guy and you already have Lopez on the active roster. So you just need to elevate one guy and it it's either going to be Stilly or it's going to be uh Banks. I I was looking at PFF and Stills didn't grade out that well, but I thought he played pretty admirable given the circumstances last last week against Dallas. Like I saw him especially toward the end of the game when they made a couple stops in the red zone, like he was out there. So that shows they've got some confidence in him. It's a position, though, man. I think like, they have confidence in, in all these guys. I mean, they're not asking him to go out there. It's not Vance Joseph anymore pulling the strings defensively. Like, you don't have my goodness these that. guys that are being asked to go out there and just get gassed yeah. and play 90% of the snaps. It's, can you can you play anywhere from 20 to 45% of the snaps, and can you just do your job on any given down? And if you can do that, your defense has a chance on any other any, any given play. Well, and the, again, the edge rushers are healthy. Zayvon yeah. Collins, you talked to him today. Looks yeah. like he's going to play. And that's a, that was a big loss last week against yeah. Dallas because he he had a sack early on in that game, and then he, he got his eye almost poked out. And and he's one of your better run defenders, right? He's, I think, done a nice job. He's much more explosive rushing the passer mm-hmm. than I would have anticipated during this transition from inside to edge rusher. So I think... I would, if you're asking me Ledbetter or Zayvon Collins, like that's tough. I would rather have Zayvon Collins available, frankly. But it's a deeper rotation on uh, at the pass that's, rush. You, you but know? they put less emphasis on defensive tackles right now. I don't think they're always going to do that. I think they'll take one early in the draft, sign one in free agency, maybe yeah. multiple. But like right now, like they need some juice from their pass rush that was pretty non existent in the second half against Dallas. Like didn't see much from Dennis Gardak, Victor Dumakeji, like. Zavin is a valuable piece, especially mm-hmm. when you consider like Brock Purdy can be rattled, like, and that that has to be the goal of this game. Yeah. Um, look, I, I mean, as far as where you're going to be able to get your opportunities, it's probably going to be opposite of where Trent Williams. You sure. Know, he obviously lines up at left tackle, and just depending on how Rollis is going to deploy the defense, is is Zavin going to get chances against the right tackle, Colt McKivitz, or is it going to be you know Gardeck going up against Trent? It's going to be so important for them to really expose those mismatches or where they feel like they can get some pressure off the edge. But yeah, that will alleviate some of the maybe unknown that you have in the middle of that defensive line where you just have some some more unknowns. So Zavin's a go. Let's go through the rest of this injury report, Bull Brock, as it relates to the Cardinals ahead of Dallas. One name that popped up, multiple, yeah. but the name that, that scares me a little bit is the standout right tackle for the Arizona Cardinals in Paris Johnson Jr., had a little bit of an ankle. Now, participated limitly, uh, limited today, didn't miss practice. But again, you're talking about a guy that needs as many reps as he can, can't be hampered before going against this ferocious 49er defensive front. Like, I know he may not be matched up necessarily down to down with Nick Bosa, right. but like, they got the kid, uh, Drake out of USC is a good player. They've got mm-hmm. an Armstead who they can move around. Like, it's not a defense that lacks pass rush. Like, tell me more, is, is Paris... Do you believe a jeopardy of missing this game? I mean, anytime you see somebody pop up with an ankle and you don't know the severity of it, it's it's tough to forecast. And I hate to do that to you and play, you know, kind of politic around it. But if it's a high ankle sprain, then then they're in trouble. But at the same time, you've got Calvin Beecham who has experience mm-hmm. at the tackle position. He was your most steady tackle last year and most available tackle last year. So you don't have like a massive drop off right now, but I think you do lose some juice not having the young man in there, the sixth overall pick from Ohio State, if that potentially happens. It's questionable right now. All we know is ankle. Haven't seen any in, in, inside information as far as what his availability is. Uh, and it's something to monitor throughout. Like, is he going to be active come game day because you're a better offensive line group? This offensive line, according to James Conner, has played phenomenal, and they are absolutely just moving guys around. And if they can be up full strength, it gives – 
them offensively a shot to do what they like to do, and that's run the football. Yeah, it's been their identity through three games, and and really it's it's the reason, in, in my opinion, they've been able to sustain drives. These last two weeks, 150 yards and then subsequently 222 yards against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, it's unthinkable. Almost 400 yards in two games for a Cardinal offensive line. It's much maligned, but we've been talking about it since – Training camp, it's the strength of this team right now. It was, in my opinion, underrated. You've got two first-round tackles and DJ Humphreys and Paris Johnson Jr., and the interiors played really well, especially Will Hernandez and Yelda Froholt. So I, I, it would be disappointing because I think you can run a little bit on San Francisco. I think, again, Dobbs attempting more than 25 pass attempts is, is a problem, especially three- to five-step drops where you can let those edge rushers tee off on you know, Dobbs, but uh, I have I've real concerns if Paris Johnson Jr. can't play. It does feel like, Bo, though, to me, it's like this game at the end of the day is, I, I feel like, a, a building point for this team as they go into the second quarter of the season. There's a big difference between 2-2 two and two and 1-3, and three, or even 1-3 and three and 1-3 one and three from a non-competitive standpoint. If they can somehow put together four competitive quarters again for the fourth consecutive week, that means everything. But if they go out there and and they don't perform well and it's not competitive, which is what a lot of people predicted each of the first three weeks, it's going to feel differently. I know that's that's weird to say, but I do feel like, again, if we're sitting here, it's halftime, third, fourth quarter, and this Cardinal team, it's a one-possession game. Yeah, Man, that's, that's going to be something for these guys really to build on, especially with Kyler Murray waiting in the wings. What were the final scores of those San Francisco games last year? The Monday night international massacre in Mexico City, right? Yeah. Remember that? That was brutal. And then the regular season finale that got out of hand. Uh, it just wasn't competitive. And if they can just show that they can compete again for a four straight week, that would be huge. Uh, see these uh, one of these questions, K.R. Gordon asking about Paris Johnson Jr. Bo, what was he doing in practice? Because that will say a lot as far as pl Paris playing. Look, this had to have happened during the closed portion of practice because I did see Paris Johnson out there today, and he looked like his, himself. Mm -hmm. He was out there. They were doing some drills with the defensive line, uh, and you know they were they were hitting some blocking pads and and and, every, and even hitting some sleds. And they look, he looked fine. I remember seeing him, big number 70, as we walked off the, the practice field during the open portion. So this ankle injury had to have happened in the closed portion during the team portion of practice today. And, and that's we just have no insight on that. So Arizona Cardinals, as far as the availability of Paris Johnson, I, I hate to tell you this, we just don't have any info beyond what's on the injury report. Yeah, I mean, we sat here and we were confident Buda Baker was going to be okay after popping up on a football Friday. Yeah. And that turned into a worst case scenario. So, you know, knock on wood, it's not uh, reminiscent of that. I'm reminiscing about last year's two games. You asked me how competitive were the Cardinals. They lost in Mexico City 38 to 10, uh, not competitive. And then, uh, frankly, they had the, the dogs called off of them in that finale 38 to 13. Uh, so they got 38 twice, could not put up more than 13 points, one of which uh, I, I don't think either had Kyler Murray in the fold. Colt McCoy and then. What is that, 76 points in two games? Yeah. 76 to 23. So not not competitive for a team that had success against Kyle Shanahan previously. Want to get to the super chat. Joel, 499. The Cardinals can keep it competitive against the 49ers. They have a chance uh, to change a lot of opinions around the NFL. Uh, 100% I agree. And I think we're talking about, again, as, as people may scoff at this, we're a long way from this happening. We're, we're talking about a team that can keep things interesting in what I think is a very dismal average NFC postseason picture. Like if, if let's just hypothetically say they lose, they lose competitively. Mm -hmm. They welcome what I think is a vulnerable Bengals team the next week. You somehow find your way into two and three, three and three, and you've got Kyler Murray waiting to come back, waiting to practice. I mean, like, who's to say this team can't have some fun, go on a little bit of a run midseason toward the end of the season? I think I think that narrative, we're, we're close to it. We haven't yeah. reached it yet. We're about a two- to three-week period. Prepare yourselves for, oh, shit, you see that in the hunt for the postseason? They're the Cardinals right well, there. Well, and look, if they compete, if they're competitive, and, and I know that JG and his coaching staff, they're never going to say, hey, we're going to hang our hat on a moral victory, but – people continue to buy into this process and this is a process driven team coaching staff roster of players are now seeing the results of that. And if they compete with the San Francisco 49ers team that, you know, everybody's counting the Cardinals out against yep. that even continues to, uh, to validate the belief in things. Right. And then if you get that and then come early next week, get a little extra juice with your franchise quarterback potentially coming off pop. Yeah. And then, you know, he obviously prepares, 
next couple of weeks until he could potentially get back on the playing field. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the kind of juice that you need uh, to keep spirits high, right? So a, a tight contest, obviously a win goes a, a very long way, but a tight contest I think goes uh, not not equally as far, but pretty far as well. I mean, again, you're watching these teams around the NFC right now. Does any does anybody scare you in the NFC South? The NFC North looks like a one division team. Again, the Cardinals are going to have their say against their own division, especially the the Rams and the Seahawks that I I feel like are very beatable, especially with K one. So, again, like we're excited about the 2024 offseason, what that could bring, but let's not punt on this season. Certainly, and again, a, a competitive outing and dare I say a win could do a lot for that. We're going to continue talking about the status of the Cardinals and who may or may not play for San Francisco. But right now, I want to remind everybody, perfect chance to dabble on this game from a gambling perspective is with our friends at BetMGM. Speaking of BetMGM, myself, Bob Brock, Damon Dog behind the mic, our guy BG. We're going to be at the BetMGM Sportsbook at the Great Lawn at State Farm Stadium this Sunday. Watch along party. Come join us. Hang out. Have some tasty beverages, quality apps, maybe a little Four Peaks brew on tap. Mm. Having a great time here at the studio, having an even better time this coming Sunday. You know what I like to do when I'm with my friends at BetMGM or when I'm home with my family? I like to dabble on the BetMGM app. Last night, man, I, I had a tasty little boosted parlay that should have hit no through no fault of BetMGM mm-hmm. that, that I missed slightly by about 15 yards from my guy Amonron St. Brown. But I'm going to tell you right now, there are a couple bets that I like ahead of this weekend. I like the Dallas Cowboys money line to be teased up. They are absolutely gonna walk over the New England Patriots this weekend. I don't I, hate it. I think that's a that's a that's an easy money maker with our friends at BetMGM. Speaking of making money, right now, BetMGM use that bonus code PHNX for just ten dollar buy-in, two hundred dollars back in bonus bets for you to use on whatever you may like. If you want to sprinkle some of those bonus bets on the Arizona Cardinals, they are over plus five hundred for the second consecutive week. God bless you all that took the team last week. <laughs> Five, plus 500 plus 525 <laughs> cashed out big money we want to see those tickets cash we want to see it with betmgm sign up again betmgm bonus code phnx place your first betmgm sportsbook wager through betmgm sportsbook mobile app for at least 10 bucks you're going to get 200 additional winnings regardless of your outcome check out the show notes for full details and now listen to my guy shane diefenbach talk about it in the disclaimer Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Weekend to New Heights. Are you looking to take your game day experience to the next level? Do it with our friends over at OG's. OG's brands, of course, they've got the multi-flavored bags. Now you can figure out if you like the fruits, if you like the creams, if you just like having, you know, just that variety at all times. Just get those multi-flavored bags right now. They got the red apple, the watermelon, peach, blackberries and cream, orange cream sickle, a personal favorite of our friend, the playmaker, Frank Sanders, all-time Cardinals receiver there, and peaches and cream. Hall of Fame flavors all in one place, right? there in the mix bag og's brands check out their full product line og's brands.com that's o-g-e-e-z brands.com follow them on socials as well when they're dropping all these new products limited time flavors as well and they've even got the sleep edition gummy which if you're having a tough time sleeping because you get so excited about the future for this cardinals team you that's can me. tap into the aqua berry flavor yeah johnny go to your local dispensary find that sleep time gummy or the mix bag or whatever you want from og's brands uh, and you got to be 21 years or older, but you can find them at your local dispensary. Check them out, social and online, ogsbrands.com. Yeah. I've been known to pop an OGs, especially like on game eve day. I'm on the Discord for PHNX diehards, and I'm just I'm cranking out stats. I'm talking with the <laughs> diehard faithful. Are you? About, about the state of this team. Yeah, it's like 1230. My wife's like, put your phone away. I'm like, <laughs> I, I literally can't unless I have one of my OGs because I'm so f- Flipping fired up about this team right now. Hey, easy. Um, I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. They win this game against San Francisco. You need to run to Bet MGM and put a put a a small healthy amount on Jonathan Gannon win Coach of the Year. If they back to back beat the Niners and the Cowboys, head to two and two with Kyler Murray waiting in the wings. Like, I don't want to hear about Mike McDaniel. Like he's he's really nice head coach. They're doing some fantastic <laughs> things for Miami. If Jonathan Gannon gets this team in this roster 
to 500 en route to maybe a postseason berth. Yeah. He, he renamed Coach of the Year after him. That's all I'm saying. Wow. I, I mean, Mike McDaniel and what they're doing down there in Miami, you can't overlook that. You can't discount it. I will I mean, overlook I, I can and, and I will. Especially with, since she's such a darling right now. Yeah. Uh, it's it's tough. It, it's like saying Kyler is going to take DeMar Hamlin out of the uh, – Hamlin, who's going to get a, a start probably this week or some playing time this week out of the pl- comeback player of the year. I just – just, yeah. the, this, the odds are stacked against you. I he just is don't a vape want, god. You know, it's true. My, Mike McDaniel, I asked JG today because it's such a, a trendy topic, you know, the 70 burger that they hung on Vance Joseph last week. You asked weekend. about that, po- that Well, point, because Kyle Shanahan was asked about, you know, maybe adopting concepts from McDaniel, who was his old OC in San Francisco. That's a weird question. It didn't come from Kyle Shanahan? Pro, some of it. Some of it. But a lot of it's the brainchild of, of Mike McDaniel. But... You know, I'm asking JG. Obviously, you're preparing for your opponent, but are you looking at trends around the league? Mm. And he's like, it's tough not to see 70 points and say, okay, what's this about? Right. Normally, he's doing like his trends research during the off season, but he, he I think he took a, a look because McDaniel and, as you pointed out, him and and Shanahan have a history together. I mean, there's there's a coaching tree that both of them are a part of, and you know, maybe Kyle Shanahan dips into the Mike McDaniel. Playbook. I mean, there's not too many offenses around the NFL that that don't have ties to the Shanahan offense, and it pains me to say this because I, for a long time, felt Kyle Shanahan was grossly overrated. It's working, and certainly working for the Arizona Cardinals. Their run game would not be what it was without the influence of the Shanahan's. I want to go to the flip side, though. I want to talk about the 49ers, unfortunately. Now, it looks like Debo Samuel, they could rest him. They yeah. could they could pull Giants like Andrew Thomas. They could rest him ahead of uh, a key matchup against Dallas next week. But it does look like, uh, you know, the Valley's own Brandon Ayuk is scheduled to make his return after a one to two week absence. Yeah, for Brock. And it's it's kind of pick your poison with those two, right? I mean, so you get the uh, the yak the yak bros, and, yeah. and you've got Debo Samuel, who was a lot, on Thursday night football where he injured his ribs. He was just a, as you like to say, a freight train from hell. He was for yep. the opposing teams, and if if you miss that. That's that's a dub, right? But then you still have to deal with the Brandon Ayuk. You got to deal with C Mac, and you got to deal with George Kittle, who the Cardinals, you know, were preparing for Kittle. They had Isaiah, Isaiah Higgins wearing an eighty-five jersey this week. That'll get it done. That's yeah. what Kittle. That'll do it. Well, look, Higgins <laughs> yeah. wore the twelve for no, Darren Waller. I don't mean to be a smartass. I apologize. Waller, you know, was pretty quiet through three quarters in the Giants' loss. But no, I mean, obviously they're trying to key in and. That that's it's a tough assignment. I don't care, you know, if you're full strength defensively, but yeah, IU coming back, and and we'll see what the status is of Debo going forward. Uh, well, let's put that injury report up. So, what was Debo's status here in in practice today? I don't have my I don't have my readers on. What's it say? It's questionable. Que- questionable. Damon He's limited today. He was limited today. So, there's IU was full. Yeah, I Ayuk to me. I mean, listen, I, I think that the Niners feel like they can probably beat the Cardinals without Debo Samuel. So if he does dress, I would imagine that maybe he doesn't play a ton. This team wants to run the football right at the Cardinal defensive line. They I think Christian McCaffrey, 30 plus touches in this game. Um, you know, Ayuk is is a challenge. He's not, in my opinion, he's not Debo Samuel, not yet. And I think the Cardinals with Jalen Thompson's play. Kayvon Wallace's play, and dare I say, you know, Keetrell Clark, like, can they limit him? Because they limited CeeDee Lamb, who I think is a better player, to 53 yards, and I think Dak Prescott's a little bit better than Brock Purdy, so that doesn't scare me. What what scares me is Debo Samuel, as you mentioned, like freight train from hell running right at the Cardinals at the line mm-hmm. of scrimmage. Like, the, the Cardinals right now do not have the horses up front to match Debo Samuel's physicality, so you're, you're going to need to force Brock Purdy into situations Third and long, second and long, and and that's got to come from stout, you know, run defense on early downs. Is, is that even possible right now? We'll have to wait and see. Shanahan is just they they've been playing it safe with Purdy. Didn't you mention to me like the large majority of Sam Fran's passing yards have come from yards after catch? Like, oh yeah, that's what they want to do. Seventy percent screen. That's absurd. Yeah. Screen passes and pass horizontal pass plays. It's like the best version of what Cliff Kingsbury wanted to do. But they have the horses to do it in Kittle, McCaffrey, Ayuk, and Debo. So, I mean, tackling is going to be at a premium for the Cardinals to, to be able to shore that up because they tackled well each of the first two weeks. They did not tackle particularly well last week against Dallas. They had some missed tackles, specifically Marco Wilson. I I think that, again, putting themselves in a position to make a play and making the play are two different things, and that's where the talent level gap you mm-hmm. could see a little bit. 
I am more concerned, though, for about the defense than they am the offense. I think right now the way this team is projecting, assuming that Paris Johnson Jr. plays offensively, I think they feel like they can run the ball on anybody. And that, that's a tremendous mindset. You can run the ball in San Francisco. You can have success against them up front. I, I know Dallas's linebackers are a little bit undervalued compared to what San Francisco has going on. But yeah. I, I, I think the Cardinals will get theirs on the ground. My concern is d- defensively, what, what do you have left? Last week's performance was masterful. 16 points you're holding Dallas to at home in four quarters. That's unbelievable. How can they keep this up? That was a question I had for Brian Baldinger. Like yeah. At some point with the talent gap, Losing defensive linemen every late week. Like, when is the other shoe going to fall? I, I hope it's not against San Francisco. Yeah, and I, I expect San Francisco to be a huge upgrade as far as their red zone offense. I mean, Dallas right. just, uh, I mean, credit to the Arizona Cardinals and what they did on defense and Topic 64 with a super chat, pointing that out that if the Arizona Cardinals continue to ball on defense, if our defense stands firm, like against Dallas, we can't lose. And it's a tall task, right? I mean, it, obviously the secondary, Jalen Thompson played so well sticky in the slot and, and in the big fourth down play against CD lamb, the coverage was there uh, that Ben don't break. It's huge. And if you can do that, if you can replicate that against San Francisco, uh, yeah, you can be in another prime position to, to shock the NFL world again. Um, but it, it's, it's a tall task because of what they can do and how many weapons they have. Even if they're down Debo, you've got Christian McCaffrey, who's looking to score what in this 13 straight game. It's hilarious what the it's minus 300, as you said, for any time Tutty for for C-Mac. And then you got Kittle and that's a matchup nightmare for anybody, uh, even though I like what they've just kind of done against tight ends. And then Brandon Ayuk is just another weapon. So it's it's just going to be tough down there. They're going to have to play and they have nothing has told me different, but they're going to have to play pretty perfect ball do you put in any stock of what gannon's defense did to this san francisco offense in the postseason we should right i feel I like i feel like people are discrediting that and i get it like i think there's much more to be held grasping for what he did against the nfc east well it's just like it's just like last game right nobody's given the arizona cardinals a chance and dallas hadn't faced any adversity to that point right and the arizona cardinals their defense immediately got off the field kind of threw the first punch punched them in the mouth, and they were able to kind of set the tone. What they wanted to do offensively, establish right. the run, and then they had, you know, the defense did their job almost the entire game. Sure, you know, there's there are points here and there, but for the most part, they were able to get the stops they needed to. They eventually got the turnover, and if they can take a Niners team that, what is it, Niners have scored 30 in, in the first three games? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, if they, if they can, you know, do a better job than Pitt, the Rams and the Giants, you know, getting off the field a few more times than they did. I I mean, they've got that chance, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, I To me, it's, you know, at the end of the day, Jonathan Gannon's defense, it's a mindset right now that they're going to be sound in their assignments. They're not bringing hardly any pressure and they're still getting home. The the Their ability to start fast defensively. I mean, we have not seen them be, surrender an early hole. Maybe yeah. a little bit against Washington. Do you in that see that Walter quarter? Sharp tweet where the Arizona Cardinals are plus thirty four? I mean, that's that's first unbelievable. Half. And I, again, like I have, I don't recall minus thirty in the second half, but yeah, plus thirty. <laughs> like when was the last time Brock Purdy had to overcome a double digit deficit? I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. Well, I, and, I, and then going back to the NFC Championship game, I mean, JG's defense just came out on fire, and Hassan Reddick, you know, obviously put the hit on, on, and, and not a dirty hit. But he he got to Brock Purdy and knocked him out of the game, and the rest is history. But I mean, they they played with their with their hair on fire, with their ears pinned back. Son Reddick made two big plays in that game. Can a guy like Zaven Collins or Dennis Gardeck or one of those guys in that pass rush rotation can they be the ones to make those big plays early on and really deliver that sock to the to the 49ers on offense. I'll go out on a limb. I think the Cardinals force at least one turnover. They force a force to turnover in every game thus far. Um, I, I think they get theirs at least once. I think either an interception by Purdy or a forced fumble. That's the mindset of what this defense wants to be. It's the reason that Gannon's defense in part outside of talent level. I had 17 interceptions last year for Philadelphia. Like that yeah. doesn't just go away. Now, can the Cardinals hang on to the football? It's what Josh Dobbs, I think, is best at right now. Zero interceptions on the season, just two turnovers yeah. offensively through three games. It's done a masterful job. Easier said than done, but again, like 
I Micah Parsons is the best football player defensively on the planet right now. Nick Bose is not far behind. I think like preparing for these these mindsets and these these teams back to back, I think it'll do do them some good, frankly. Because yeah. again, they, they do so many things similar, you know, and Steve Wilkes, Dan Quinn, both ex head coaches, you know, subsequently, you know, Wilkes was a was a failure as a head coach. Dan Quinn had his cup of coffee and could very well be a head coach again. And I hope for Steve Wilkes, he gets that opportunity again. Yeah. But like it's it feels like we're in the same ballpark as last week, except this week they're on the road. And I, I think Kyle Shanahan obviously is a better head coach right now than Mike McCarthy. Definitely think, a better I, offensive play caller than and, McCarthy. And they're just much more buttoned up, right? Like you knew, I mean, how it, call yourselves out. How many people knew that Dak Prescott was going to throw an interception in that game? It felt like it was inevitable. <laughs> like he was going to throw a pick and a, and a, a backbreaking one in the in the red zone. They had, you know, penalties left and right, holding calls, punt returns. Does returns. Brock ever come back to to earth, though? It, it, it's yeah, I think ha- he does, it feels but it, like it's in a, Does it happen this week, too? That's another question. But I, I think he's somebody that the Cardinals can make uncomfortable through a couple quarters. But again, when you start laying in C-Mac at the line of scrimmage against this defensive line, it's tough, man, because they will run him three consecutive plays. Like, I watched the second half against the Giants. That game was at least a 15 to 20 point deficit. Kyle Shanahan's given Christian McCaffrey like consecutive carries on on multiple possessions. Like bam, bam, bam and it's just it's it's what I would do and I applaud him for that, but it's it's very like you know, not thinking big picture over the course of 17 games. Like they don't care about that. They're trying to win every possible game right now and putting teams away. And that tells me in part too because Brock Purdy, you know, he's not lighting the world on fire. He's got what Four touchdowns to zero picks. You know, people mm-hmm. want to talk about Josh Dobbs only having two passing touchdowns. This offense is Christian McCaffrey. If they stop Christian McCaffrey, they'll have an opportunity to win this game. If they don't, it's going to be a long day. I mean, if you look at the the Rams blueprint from week two, you know, Brock Purdy, pretty pedestrian game throwing the football. Sure, you know, efficient, you know, accurate, but just over 200 yards. He had a rushing touchdown in the red zone. Debo had one, and of course, Christian McCaffrey. And, and it's like, even if you if you if it goes according to plan, you're going to be it, it's it's your the odds you're you're back against the wall right against this Niners team. Yeah. Um. So it, even if if the game plan goes according to schedule, it's still going to be tough. It really is going to be tough. Like you can slow down Christian McCaffrey, and then Brock Purdy has enough playmakers on offense to where they can move the football and they can put up points. It's, well, what what did we say last week? The Cardinals to beat Dallas, they had to play a perfect game, and Dallas yeah. would have to be off, and that's what happened. The Cardinals. They almost played a flawless game on both sides of the ball, and Dallas turned the ball over. Right. I mean, that's that's what it's going to take. Is can can you force Brock Purdy into a couple interceptions, which is unlike him? Can you not turn the ball over? And yeah. the, the Cardinals sustaining drives in that first half and keeping the defense off the field. That I mean, that that was everything, right? Because every time I thought, you know, this will be the possession they go three and out. This will be the possession they have to surrender points. It's like no, they put together another drive. And again, maybe they're building something, Bo Brock. Where I want to be naive and think Josh Dobbs. He was better against the Giants, better against the Cowboys, better against the 49ers. Like, that's conceivable. Yeah. Right? Because as you pointed out, and our guy Brian Baldinger pointed out, the more exposure and the more he plays, maybe, just maybe, the more confidence he gets. Yeah. We just haven't, we haven't, he hasn't had that that game where he's been exposed to a certain extent. Um, but if the Cardinals can continue this hot start in a third consecutive game where they put up 20 plus points in the first half, and they put the pressure on the opposing team. I mean, anything's possible. I mean, in finishing against the 49ers, he thought it was tough. Obviously, you couldn't do it against Washington. But look, I mean, there's so many things you were integrating in there for the first time, including your starting quarterback. And then, of course, you see kind of the the ugly. You see the, the, the I guess, inexperience uh, rear its ugly head of, of your coordinators in week two and your inability to get off the field where you, you win the turnover battle, but you just can't get off the field. They just go scoring drive after scoring drive. And then in then this third game, they they figure it out, right? They figured out how to get the stops. They got the turnovers in the second half. And I know, like, the Niners are going to give you a better shot than the Cowboys, but if you put yourself in a position for a third consecutive week, or shit, how about for the fourth consecutive week, where you're leading going in the locker room, I mean, that just puts all the pressure on the 49ers. We have not done a halftime show where this team has not been leading. It's been fantastic. Now, 
is this going to be the first embarrassing game of the season? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you, it's because it's a perfect transition. (laughs) It can be no more embarrassing than what took place with my co-host today. Oh, boy. uh, At the team facility with one Jonathan Gannon. (laughs) Um, So if you have a fire in your gut, I would tell you maybe take a Pepto-Bismol after what Bo Brock experienced today. So I'm going to give you the floor, my friend. As you tell our fine folks about the interaction you had with JG at the team facility It's today. pretty one-sided for the most part. And I don't know if I can show my face in Tempe at the Cardinals facility any longer. And I felt like early in the season, the, the season opener, the Cardinals are getting ready to fly to Washington, right? I had a missed opportunity. I told this, I think I told this on air, right? I'm sitting there and I'm cutting my 60-second breakdown of Cardinals practice on Friday. JG walks out to his car. And I, I drop the ball and I say, I just say, have a good trip, JG, yeah, right? That's why they lost that weekend. So I'm sitting out there. I'm cutting my post-practice uh, video today, which you can find on this YouTube channel right now. And uh, free plug. Shameless plug. Shameless. Right. And I hear JG's car. I know what his car looks like. I hear it remote start because he's he a smart to- guy. He Toyota's gets- <laughs> tr- 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 what I think it's a, it's a Kia Sportage. He's he's getting it. He gets it remote started because it's hot and he's a smart guy. He gets the AC going, so I know he's coming. Yeah. And what's his infamous what's his infamous quote? Uh, we're gonna effing gut. Let's these guys. fucking gut these let's, guys, let's, right? Let's and I'm like, I'm gonna guys. tell him, let's gut these guys. Nice. He roll he rolls up to his his because it's also the Niners because that's when the quote came out. Right. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna I'm gonna shoot my shot this time. Nice. He goes to his driver's side door. He's about to get in. I go, let's gut these guys. <laughs> And he goes, hey, have a good weekend, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, a little piece of me died inside because I, I shot my shot. And it's like if you if I, I don't know, it's, it's like if you see somebody on the streets that's known for something and you tell them they're what they're known for. What was our example? Like, if you say... If you saw Aerosmith on the street, and you're yeah. like, hey, man, I love the collab with oh, Run DMC, man. and Steven hey, Tyler's like, get the fuck away from me. Steven Tyler, hey, man. Sweet emotion, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> it was the opposite of Travis Kelsey shooting a shot at Taylor right. Swift. It the did. opposite effect happened today, whereas we're not sure Bo will be allowed back yeah, to the facility. Arizona Animal, did Bo redeem himself? Nope. Completely missed. And with that, let's go. This week's <laughs> gut meter... With the Arizona Cardinals versus the San Francisco 49ers. We're going to fucking gut these guys. We should have Bo's head at the bottom with like X's for eyes. Just in despair. Listen, on this meter and this meter alone, when you come off a dub like that. Let's gut these guys, dude. (laughs) <laughs> he texted, Jonathan. he texted me and i could just i could feel how how much you're dead inside right now because you you admire john again a lot you Look, see him every day he's a big part of your life it's 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 back in high school isn't it yeah you want to fit in you want to <laughs> be with the cool kids and you get your opportunity and you completely blow it yeah it, you know we'll have we'll have a chance for retribution right you'll have a chance to see jg at least again. i didn't like misquote i said hey you know Got got of these guys on on this weekend, Jonathan. I, I, I mean, at least I got that right. Yeah, that's sure. We'll take our small victories <laughs> if we can get them. But again, the gut meter has turned up to a hundred. Yeah, dare I say it's turned up to eleven following the ass kicking Look against Dallas. Uh, we're gonna keep it here until this uh, is the OG gut team right here, the Niners. This is what this is where he pulled up in front of the fans of Philly. He said, "Let's fucking gut these guys." And what they do? I would say the large majority of Cardinal fans would would agree that. The San Francisco 49ers are the one team you'd love to gut on the schedule this yeah. year, given the fact that they're the darlings of the NFC, right? They get preferential treatment. What's with the Niner fans, by the way, always fighting in the stands? Like, be careful if you're yeah. if you're part of the Bird Gang going out to Santa Clara this weekend. Every time that I see a, a fight break out on, on the Twitter streets with one of these videos that comes out, it's always somebody wearing a San Francisco jersey. I don't know, man. They deserve to be gutted on the field. Not off. Everybody keep it civil off the field, please. Yeah, Victor's right. I'm friend zone. You gave, I don't hey. even know if you're friend zoned. I, I yeah. think you might be like uh, you're. Might be a restraining order. I think and- you've been. You and Howard are right here. <laughs> now Howard's up here with JG. That's what's happened to you. I think if we're gonna get an in with JG, it's for, it's from our guy Howard Balzer. Check out his work, by the way. Go phnx.com. <laughs> That's right. Howard, Howard Balls are not only tweeting out about Cardinal injury reports, but That's also right. the latest with who killed Tupac. Uh, <laughs> you can find that out and more at Howard Balzer's Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to segue that. We, we're drinking some Four Peaks. We're having a good yeah. time here on a football Friday. I've got my wow, Joy Bus wow, 
I've got my pumpkin porter at home, the premier pumpkin beer. Uh, I like to keep it spicy. I like to keep it friendly with my friends at Four Peaks. Again, we're going to have Four Peaks on tap this weekend at BetMGM, the sports book at the Great Lawn. But again, if you're dabbling, you can't come out to BetMGM, pick up some pumpkin porter to get that false state of mind going. Notes of mut- nutmeg, allspice, and toasted pie crust. Hello. What? I mean, like, I was dabbling the other day. I was like, could, should I do some, like, beer brats with some pumpkin Ooh. porter? Would that be going a little overboard? Yeah, not for it would boy. be. Yeah, not but you're for, the pumpkin king. I am. It's my favorite beer, and uh, it's and the I think about Valley, and I think about a couple different things. This is one of them right here. I've been introduced to this over the course of the last 24 months since I've lived here. It is fan flipping tastic. The Tempe location is off the chain. I take my family there all the time. Appetizers. We had a draft party there last year. I mean, it's just, it's wholesome Valley fun. And that's our friends at Four Peaks. Again, drink responsibly. 21 years and older to dabble with Four Peaks. Again, check them out at Four Peaks online or Four Peaks pub to keep up with the latest from our Arizona hometown brewery. Got a buddy coming into town tonight. Beer connoisseur. Can't wait to show him Four Peaks. It's one of those Educate things. Educate You're, you got a lot of pride about the local brewery in town in Fort Peaks to show it off. Yeah. Can't wait to do so tomorrow. Uh, as far as this weekend, you're trying to find all the full football slate or college football. It's going to be right there if you got Fubo TV. There's no questions asked. you got playoff baseball coming up as well. Maybe the snakes clinching tonight? Well, you don't have to worry about where the Diamondbacks are going to be on TV. With Fubo TV, 140-plus live channels of sports shows and movies and news. Stream live TV from any device. College football, Pac-12, ASU, U of A. You got that on Fubo. How about the Ryder Cup? You can check out all the action, no matter how late it is, on Fubo TV and save some money while you're doing it. Of course, going to Fubo TV dot com slash phnx sign up for 15 percent off your first month off of fubo pro that's fubo tv.com slash phnx i feel like if i saw espo on the street and i said hey espo ahoy hoy that's what it was like with uh jg his catchphrase i yeah i'm not i don't even hey understand. arnold schwarzenegger gotcha i'll be back huh oh, jesus <laughs> Our guy, John DePaz, the PHNX Diamondbacks crew, uh, hoping to clinch a division, or excuse me, not a division title, a postseason berth tonight. John DePaz looking for somebody to go to the game with. So if John goes stag, yeah. somebody grab him tonight, say what's up to our guy, Sean DePaz, uh, Diamondbacks. Uh, I want to say first pitch is in about an hour plus time. Uh, and yeah, it's great. Great vibes here in the Valley. We've got Suns um, preseason action coming on mm-hmm. here in uh, about 10 days or so. Cardinals are a very competitive, feisty team. A lot of, lot of good stuff with Valley Sports. This is good stuff. Topic uh, 64, 999. Watching the replay of Giants Niners, C-Mac runs it right up the gut, 80% of his handoffs. He has not seen that animal, Kazir White, coming right at him. He won't win those handoffs. I will say the Giants linebackers blow. So that they're 100% right there, Topic 64. Kazir White's the best inside linebacker this team's had since Jordan Hicks. Uh, and I, I think he's got the kind of attitude and emotion that JG wants from his defensive savant, his defensive leader. So all it takes is one possession. It set, it set the tone against Dallas. I remember that three and out that Dallas had. They had the penalty right. They couldn't convert. That set the tone for the entire game. If the Cardinals can force an early three and out, I think it will do wonders for yeah. this team's chances on Sunday. It goes a long way, but it, it, it puts you, I think, up one, but that's it with the 49ers because of how quick they can strike back on offense or even on the defensive side of the yep. football. They, they've got that they've got that game breaking ability. You know, I talked uh, to JG today along with the the rest of the press uh, about you know the opportunity potentially for Paris Johnson Jr. Yep. and the task at hand. You know, obviously he shows up on the injury report with an ankle. Hopefully he's available come Sunday. But you know, JG said. Hey, going up against Bosa after going up against Micah Parsons, that's that's life in the NFL these days. That's like, right. If, if you're you're playing a premium position, is in a premier position at tackle, and a quote from JG is you're you're facing a different war daddy every week. So Nick Bosa is the war daddy for the 49ers, while Parsons was the guy for the Cowboys, and then you mentioned for the Arizona Cardinals, a guy he calls the Cardinals own war daddy because you're white. What he can do as far as combating what the Niners like to do offensively. Uh, this is a fantastic comment. Thank you so much. Illa Dre, $1.99 Super Chat. Y'all are the best AZ podcast, hands down. Well, thank you so much, Illa Dre. Uh, it's only because 181 plus 
watching here on YouTube on a Friday choose to spend their day with us each and every single day. So thank you guys so much for helping build this community to what it is. Thank you so much to our many talented peers here at PHNX Sports. And uh, perfect transition, Bob Brock. Key matchups to watch for the Arizona Cardinals ahead of Cardinals at 49ers. And I'm going to start if we're cool with that because yeah. I, I think, again, this team, they set the tone up front. They set the tone with their offensive line. It's been the best unit, hands down, of any unit for this team. And I'm looking at the matchup right now, DJ Humphreys versus Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa, you know, defensive player of the year. He got paid a premium, well-deserved. And then DJ Humphreys, 105 dropbacks, zero sacks allowed on the year. It's a guy that could very well be in his last year with the Arizona Cardinals. All of his guaranteed money got moved to 2023. Man, oh, man. If DJ Humphreys, I feel like, played pretty well against Dallas. Can he continue to build on that? Remember, he didn't have OTAs. He came back during training camp. He's a guy that you have to build momentum. It has to snowball, right? But number 74, you will not find a, a better leader in that locker room for this team. I think if if he goes out there, and I don't want to say handles Nick Bosa, but contains him, that breeds confidence throughout the rest of that 53-man roster. Yeah, if one of the highest-paid players on, on the roster plays up to his salary, it's a, it's a big shot in the arm for the offense. If DJ Humphreys can slow down Nick Bosa, and you look at this, I mean, if as long as he's not making life a living hell for Joshua Dobbs, nine hurries, five QB hits, and a sack— if, if DJ Humphreys can play more up to his stats than Nick Bosa plays up to his stats in this game, yep, huge boost for the Arizona Cardinals. And and look, those are those are not numbers to turn your nose up with with DJ Humphreys. I know after Week One you were kind of asking for better performances, and I think he's delivered that the last two weeks. Yeah, I th again, like wasn't great against the Commanders, but what he did against Dallas, I mean, he was one of the most more consistent offensive mm -hmm. linemen. Um, and for me, it's like just stay healthy, DJ, because. When we get DJ on the field for consistent periods of time, it's a really good player for the Cardinals. Like 70-plus PFF rating, right? Somebody who's made a Pro Bowl where you get in trouble spots with DJs when he's in and out of the lineup, and he has to regain that momentum and those cadence. The Cardinal offensive line, wall of quality this year, needs the lead leadership of DJ Humphreys. Like Yelda Froelold's in his mid-20s. Will Hernandez has only been here a year. You know, Paris Johnson Jr. is a baby. Like, you need DJ Humphreys at 74 as your team captain. He's not only the team captain, he's the captain of the offensive line. And you want your best going up against San Francisco's best. And I, DJ Humphreys has had success against uh, against Nick Bosa before. Yeah. Like, I, I think back to the second year, Kyler Murray going into San Francisco week one mm -hmm. and the Cardinal offensive line handling Nick Bosa that game and Kyler yeah. Murray going off for about 350 yards all purpose en route to a Cardinal dub. Like, let's have a throwback game. And let's give Josh Dobbs every opportunity to remain a consistent threat through the year and on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, massive. I mean, that that game was one of the most physical games I've seen the Cardinals play, uh, in, at least during the the Cliff era. Mm -hmm. That was that was a massive win for that team. With the open up the season, yeah, yeah, and then the, the course, Niners had just been to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and then the, the next year in 2021 when they did it with Colt McCoy at quarterback, also yeah. very physical. Not a team that you. Net, you know that you you're used to seeing get out physically played uh the Niners it the Cardinals happen. certainly did that and they're gonna have to do that again this week let's get to my key matchup because I, I completely agree with you trying to slow down Nick Bosa is huge what JG called you know Nick Bosa their war daddy he called because you're white the Arizona Cardinals war daddy look at these stats only player in the NFL right now 30 tackles uh, one sack, one pick. Of course, that huge back-breaking pick against Dak Prescott in the win last week. Can he continue these performances? Kazir White, absolutely. And if, if anybody's going to slow down and be the kind of the key cog in slowing down C-Mac, Christian McCaffrey, 353 rush yards, 70 receiving yards, three touchdowns, all of those on the ground. It's going to start with seven in the middle of that defense. Sure, it's going to help You know, with, with guys like uh, Zayvon Collins off the edge and Dennis Gardeck and they're versatile as far as coming off the edge and not just pass rush guys. They can slow down on the run, but cause your white's going to be the one that's going to be putting his body on the line, taking out 23 of San Francisco. He was the guy that Jonathan Gannon won in free agency to come over and continue that physical style that had been developed and nurtured in Philadelphia. Like, again, I'm not calling for careers to be ended, but can we do an Aeneas Williams, Steve Young, where you just knock somebody on their ass? I mean, th this guy McCaffrey's had, Wide open lanes to begin the season, right? It's it's come relatively easy for San Francisco. How about somebody lay a pop like because you're white on, on Christian Matt, uh, McCaffrey, who has been known to, to go down from time to time. Again, I'm not rooting for injury, but setting the tone from a physicality standpoint. Because uh, don't get it twisted. Like we're sitting here saying like, 
who the Cardinals are going to play a defensive tackle. Like the Niners are saying the same thing. We should have success. Kazir White being able to fill up the line of scrimmage and putting a pop on somebody, a helmet to helmet, as they used to say, would go a long way. Because again, like the, the Shanahan offense can run with a lot of different backs. You lose McCaffrey, you lose 90% of what they want to do mm-hmm. as their game plan. You can you can make things very difficult for Brock Purdy if you take away the ultimate safety net number 23. If, if Christian McCaffrey is not himself, Brock Purdy will not be himself. Make Brock Purdy throw 40 times a game. If Brock Purdy beats you for 40 attempts, then so be it. I, I'm selling out for the run this week. They have to be much better tackling than we saw. We talked about that earlier. Kazir right, White, though, and I tweeted this out after last week's game-winning interception. I, I'll double down on it. He's playing the best inside linebacker of the last five-plus years for this team. He's a game-changer, and he sets the tone. Like, I like Jordan Hicks a lot, mm-hmm. but those Cardinal teams, as you just alluded to, could be soft at times, yeah. especially against the run. Kazir White, for what they've been able to do and keeping everybody on track and in place, young players, right, New players are bringing guys off the street. Then you have the one staple in the middle of the defense. Remember, no Buda Baker in the back end because your White's the captain, the MVP of this defense easily thus far this season. War Daddy. Yep. War Daddy White. Love it. I mean, put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> put that on a Put that on a merchandise <laughs> locker T-shirt, baby. He gets a couple more interceptions, man. I mean, two years, $4 million. Pretty good pretty good deal not by uh, Monty Austin for It's it. not uh, investing first-round uh, picks in it? Listen, in that position? they each their own, but that's a poor way of team building. Steve Kime, and this is the right way to do it, Mr. Monty Austin. You want to get into these predictions, our players of the game, offensive and defensively, our X-Factors? Yeah, take it away, Mr. Bobo. All right, let's take a look at mine. As much as I'm pumped up about this team, San Francisco, it is an absolute buzzsaw right now. 24-17, I have the Niners winning this game at home. Uh, but if the Arizona Cardinals have a path to victory, it's going to be riding that run game once again. And it's if if that happens, your def- your offensive star is James Conner. Mm-hmm. He was he showed up on the uh, injury report this week with a back, a little sore. Looks like he worked that out. Not even uh, a designation going into this game. He's full go. He told us he's feeling good and he's ready to roll. So number six is ready to run through some blocks. Uh, and some tacklers for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And then, like I said, if you're going to have any success against this against the San Francisco offense and get to Brock Purdy, it's going to come from a guy like Dennis Gardeck, the Zayvon Collins, a Victor Dumakeji. It's going to be an all-out effort. But if Gardeck can be the one to lead the way and do it again, on the pass, on the rush, we saw him just completely bounce off a potential blocker last week and torpedo a ball carrier. If he can continue that that violent play, it's good news for the Arizona Cardinals. And then I've got the X factor in Paris Johnson Jr. Now, hopefully this was before he showed up on the injury report. But mm-hmm. if he's a guy that can continue to do what he's done so far. Now, I know he had a couple penalties last week. And he also had you know the sack that he gave up to Micah Parsons. But if he can continue to be a beast and a kind of a bulldozer run grader, that's just going to bode well for what the Arizona Cardinals want to do offensively. It's a mix of, of course, James Conner utilizing Joshua Dobbs mobility and then also mixing in Rondell Moore and we'll see what Keontae Ingram's uh, status is come game day if he's going to miss it maybe they'll elevate a guy like Corey Clement but you know the guys that can make big plays in this run game and Paris Johnson's the part of the reason why they're getting opportunities to bust it out for big explosive run plays number one team in explosive run plays in the NFL it's not the Niners it's the Arizona Cardinals Paris Johnson Jr. represents everything this team wants to be now and moving into the future. I don't want to be robbed of watching him against San Francisco for the first time. We got our guy uh, picking spreads in the chat with a super chat asking, is Paris Johnson Jr. going to play? Is is his opportunity in jeopardy? $1.99. Thank you so much. Picking spreads. I I think if you ask both of us right now, we feel pretty good about him playing, but it's something to watch. Ankles can change seemingly overnight. They're going to be cautious with him. He is like Kyler Murray one of the most prized uh, investments on the team. But, I mean, he's a, he's a war daddy in and of himself. He's a gamer dating back to his time at Ohio State. I don't think he missed any time during his last year there. So, again, they need him if they're going to win. I like Kelvin Beecham. Kelvin Beecham, for lack of a better term, coming off the couch, coming off the bench to block this Niner front. That's that's asking a lot. That is. Uh, speaking of asking a lot, it's, it's asking a lot of the Cardinals to win this game. However... Here's my prediction, and I want everybody to take this with a grain of salt. I picked them to win each of the first two weeks they lost. I picked them to lose last week they won. So for that reason and that reason only, <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say San Francisco wins 28-17. This will be the first time they're held under 30 points uh, this season, though. 
Um, if the Cardinals are going to get this upset, Michael Wilson leads the team in receiving yards. Hollywood Brown's limited with a thumb. Michael Wilson, the physicality, I think, lends himself well to taking advantage of that. 49ers secondary, which, I mean, Ufunga and company, they're, they're a real team. Yeah. But I, Michael Wilson, to me, budding star, dare I say, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, ask, yes, please, give him rhythm targets this week, Joshua Dobbs. Let him eat, let him break tackles. Love this kid, can't say enough good things. Not on the flip side, Zayvon Collins. They missed him last week when he was injured, had a sack, let him build off of that. Have him placed over Mike McGlinchey's sorry-ass replacement at right tackle. The Cardinals will get home in this game. Brock Purdy's a statue in the pocket. Mobility's not a factor. I mean, they did not nice job against Dak. Obviously, struggle against Danny Dimes. This is the first time, really, this season where they're going to have... I mean, Purdy's athletic, but he's athletic in the same realm as, like, Sam Howell. Like, I think the yeah, Cardinals are going to be able... Yeah, they're going to be able to contain him. Zayvon Collins is a big part of what they want to do. And then the X factor. How about Matt Prater and the season he's having? Fuck me. Last week, <laughs> all those field goals essentially won them the game. 62-yarder. Like, let Matt Prater eat. Because yeah. I think right now, Matt Prater is one of the most valuable kickers in the NFL. And for a Cardinal team with a small margin for error, what it does for the confidence of this team, like, we're getting points. Joshua Dobbs is leading drives in the first half. Bo, you mentioned it. Ten opportunities for points each of the last two weeks. That's fantastic. So, again, everybody wants touchdowns. But when you're playing with a backup quarterback in particular, Bo Brock, you're able to convert drives to points. I don't care if it's seven, even if it's three with Prater. That's that's great for this team. It's what they didn't do last year under Kingsbury. Prater had an off year. I know people were concerned. Didn't look great great in the preseason. He has been money, Bull Brock, and I, I'm all in on Prater. I think he's been fantastic. He's been great. He's He's been one of those things where you can, if you put yourself in a position for points, you usually get points. Now, yeah. Obviously, you get the 50-plus yard here he missed in the opening drive against the Giants, and, and that's it. Other than that, he's been money in the bank. You know, I look at what the Rams were able to do offensively against this Niners offense, and, you know, they put up 23 points. It's been the most points that they've surrendered this season. Yeah. Uh, and I just don't see that as the blueprint, right? You have Matthew Stafford throwing the ball all around the yard. Uh, you have, what, uh, Puka Nakua. He's He's got, what, 50, like, how many targets did he have in that game? Like, I just don't like see 20. Joshua Dobbs being that type of rhythm passer. Like, I've been encouraged by what I've seen uh, from Joshua Dobbs in the passing game, but I just don't see him, you know, dinking and dunking and, and throwing it all around. Where I think that the Arizona Cardinals can impose their will uh, on a, on a tough run defense and and just play to their strength and and really emphasize doing that. Now you could you can live by that, you can die by that, but the Arizona Cardinals went up against a Dallas Cowboys rush defense that only surrendered about 170 yards rushing before last week, and then they put 222 up that week. Same thing's going for, for San Francisco. San Francisco, I mean, they're still, they've given up less than 200 yards rushing. It's going to be, uh, they're going you're asking for a repeat performance here where you double the production through the first couple of weeks of the season. Here's the template. You want the template? I'm going to give you one. Last October, October 16th, does anybody remember where they were, who played whom? The Atlanta Falcons welcomed Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco. They forced Jimmy G into two turnovers, two interceptions. The Atlanta Falcons, as a team, 168 yards on the ground. That's the template with Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota, and they beat the 49ers 28-14. to Now, it's asking a lot, but again, their efficiency, 9-14 of 14 that day on third down. They had 18 first downs, um, 56 total plays. Again, their passing numbers were relatively average. They only passed for 121 yards. They they ran for 5.2 yards per carry against this Niner front. And I know things are different. They integrated some new pieces. They got the guy from Philadelphia, whatever. You can still run on San Francisco. And I again, like I think D'Amico Ryan's a better defensive coordinator than Steve Wilkes. So I, I would not be surprised. Go back and look at that game. Marcus Mariota had a lot of success on the ground. Cardinals are built very similar to that Atlanta team from a year ago. And they've got James Conner who's top three in the NFL in broken tackles. He's, in my opinion, should be a Pro Bowl back this year. Stick with that, Cardinals. Don't be afraid to go three and out if it means running the ball directly at San Francisco. Start the possession with two consecutive runs and give Josh Jobs an opportunity mm -hmm. where he's not forced to throw third and seven, third and eight, right? I, I know fans can get frustrated with that because not everything's going to pop. Right. Keeping that defense honest was why Michael, Michael Wilson was, was wide open at the mm -hmm. end of that game against Dallas because Dallas assumed first down we're selling out for the run there's number 14 streaking down the field and making the game changing play so um immense confidence joshua dobbs the ability to read the rpo fooling michael parsons that first play from scrimmage 
taken off down the sideline, make San Francisco regret being aggressive with Nick Bosa and company, and I think they will. Well, look at what this offense has put on tape so far. I mean, the RPO, you know, running the football, mm -hmm. what you know, how many guys that are getting schemed open, and just the just the, so, so many things that San Francisco or opposing defenses have to game plan for now. Yep. Or that wasn't necessarily true with you know an offensive guru as as your head coach and your play caller before. I mean, a, a true credit to to what Drew Petzing has done to this offense. He's brought modern concepts to this to this team, and you're seeing them execute the hell out of them. And you know if you're if you're concerned about running the ball on first and second down, you know we could the the Cardinals could be without Keonta Ingram, and it's a heavy dose of James Conner. And I there hasn't been a whole lot of negative rushes by James Conner. James Conner has been getting churning out yards. Big chunk plays, but also he's been he's been James, steady James Conner that we've seen before too. And I'm I'm anxious to see Corey Clement potentially play. Like I, I like Keontae Ingram fine, but Keontae Ingram hasn't necessarily lit the world on fire. I'm gonna tell you something. I I may not hate watching, even if Hollywood Brown plays. He's he's limited right now. He's got a thumb I issue. He'll play. I, he he'll he'll likely dress. He he was out there, you know, catching balls and warm ups and stuff. And I mean, if it's a thumb and he's able to catch the football without any big issue. I, Who, who had the most success against the 49ers last year in the air against this team? Uh, our guy. Our guy, Greg Dorch. Yeah. Uh, last November in Mexico City, Greg Dorch with limited opportunities, 103 yards from the slot. I wouldn't hate that. I think there's an opportunity. Rondell Moore in the backfield. Zach Pascal, very physical run blocker. Mm -hmm. Put him outside. If Hollywood can't go uh, 100%. Let Greg Dorji from the slot. Yeah, again. if that's look, if that's a committee, no, I don't even think that's it, not it, a bad place. It, to it be. couldn't even. It, it might not even be in the slot. I mean, he could be playing that Hollywood role. I, I I told you this, and this is in the open portion of practice, in it, so I can report it. Is like, I saw Joshua Dobbs throwing passes to Greg Dorch. Now, since preseason and training camp, and through the first few weeks of the season, it's always Clayton to the twos, you know, tune to Dorch because he's he's the second string. Slot receiver. He's the first team punt returner, kick returner, but he's second streaming as far as the wide receiver core right. goes. But he's out there. And yesterday he was catching a couple passes from Do Joshua Dobbs. So maybe they're preparing with not 100% Hollywood Brown for Dorch to get some reps. Or in the run, like when you're gearing up to run the football, sure, it's, it's, you're kind of putting on your turn signal a little bit and, and, uh, you know, showing a telegraph. Yeah, it. telegraphing things, but shit, play to his strength. I think Dobbs and Dorch would work well with together. With Pascal, by the way. I yeah, and that. I agree with that. Yeah. But I, again, like Michael Wilson's been an ass kicker in the run game. I don't think there's anything wrong with having Pascal and Michael Wilson out there if you want to load up the box against San Francisco. I also think Josh Dobbs, while he's had success, needs a clean pocket and needs separation from his receivers. Greg Dorch, top five in the NFL in separation last year at the position. But Dobbs uh, is showing he doesn't need a whole lot of time. Like That's he's, true. He's done some three-step drops. That and, touchdown pass to Hollywood off his back foot yeah. in the red zone last week was a thing of beauty. Well, the was third fantastic. and eight was just as beautiful down the sideline to Hollywood Brown. In the red and zone. He, he had Micah the, Parsons bearing down on him. Yeah. He took about three steps, balls out, and it's right on the money. Only one place to Hollywood. It, it would be very poetic because everybody's giving love to Dorch, and it's I would dare say it's overdue because, again, Dorch does the most with his opportunities, and I'm not just saying that because he's a part of this podcast – would be very poetic just at the time where this team says, okay, maybe we're out of gas. We've got some injuries. If a guy that was a big part of their success last year jumps in and has a big game. Like, I think that it would be very appropriate for this Cardinal team, which is mm -hmm. all about next man up. It's a different person every week. Like last week, it's Rondell Moore, right? Um, you know, two weeks ago, you know, Josh Dobbs starts to play a little bit better. If we look up at the box score, says like Greg Dorch has like four for 80 and a touchdown. I mean, that would be very on brand for this team right now. Yeah, we see 187. Looks like a Niners fan. He's got the Purdy avatar. It's a cool looking one. We're not taking y'all lightly. And that's good coaching, right? I mean, it, if they're prepared for this game and, and they don't come out like the Giants did in week two and obviously the Cowboys in week three, you know, it's good coaching and it's a testament to the leaders in that locker room for, for making sure that they don't underestimate their opponent in a home game you know, where they're double digit favorites in the Niners, like that, that's good on them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that it's going to be big for the Arizona Cardinals if they can continue to get this going. I saw this in the chat now as we were talking about Dobbs, and I mentioned it before you, before the show. Yeah. And you kind of poo pooed it. What's that? Because you don't like anything fun. No. The Dobb father. 
I just don't understand that. Like Godfather, God and Dobbs do not sound the same. So no, I told Dob, the Dobb father. What it, what is he the father of? The 49ers, hopefully. Hopefully he's the 49ers <laughs> daddy. I like that. If they if Dobbs plays one, they beat the 49ers, uh Dobb father, you shall have. But let's just okay. let's, let's put a pin in that. Let's <laughs> while we get to these super chats. Benjamin, 499, limit their playmakers. Pollard had a quiet hundred yard game. Lamb limited and Gallup non existent. Hundred percent. Now I mean, their playmakers are an upgrade over what Dallas has. I, I love CeeDee Lamb. I mean, he's not Debo Samuel, in my opinion. Brandon Ayuk's probably the best number two receiver in the NFL, and, and George Kittle's top three tight end when he's healthy. McCaffrey's the best running back on the planet. I mean, there, there's a reason. I like Brock Purdy fine. There's a reason why this offense works. It's He's a distributor. Mm -hmm. He's distributing to, to top five guys with their position across the NFL. Kudos for San Francisco. They've been tremendous in, on talent evaluation. But again... Debo doesn't play. Kittle gets banged up. You limit what McCaffrey does. You know, I would I would imagine Brock Purdy looks relatively average. But if those guys are all humming and he can just f f f dink and dunk all over the mm -hmm. place, Cardinals are going to have their work come out for him. But again, you got to play four quarters, man. It's like what people don't realize about this Cardinal team. They have been competitive even when they're losing in every single quarter this year. There have not there has not been a quarter that looks whatever the fuck happened against the Denver Broncos last week. They're, this team does not quit no matter their talent level. And Bo Brock, that's in large part why people want to come and see them. In part, my eight-year-old son, who loves the Arizona Cardinal football team this year, has been introduced to them, has asked my wife, take me to a game, let's go to a game. They're looking for Bengal tickets right now. Mm. The best place to do that, bet MGM right now. I know a lot of people were like, I don't know, remember. Talking about game time? Yeah, with our friends at game time. Yeah. I'm sorry, I said bet MGM. We're going to be at bet MGM at the Great Lawn. You can get your tickets through game time. A lot of people said, I don't know if I want to renew my tickets this year. But perfect place, dare I say, cherry pick with our friends at Game Time because procrastinators are rewarded 20% off your first Let's purchase go. with PHNX here. Again, promo code PHNX. Procrastination is key. Buy your tickets same day. Buy them the day before. Not only can you get tickets at a premium price, under price, compared to the competitors, you can also get, how about this, a parking pass? It's your one-stop shop. Everything you want to do, whether it's Cardinal football, concerts, venue events, whatever, do it with our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that bonus code PHNX, 20% off your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. My folks are coming out for a game later this year. I, I told him, said, should we buy tickets now? I said, no. How's this? Hold this promo code PHNX, maybe week of, maybe day of, go on Game Time, and I, I promise you, you will not regret it. Use the link in the description. Game time, no other place you be, you should be buying your tickets. Yeah, in my game wife time. took my uh, my son to the Giants game week two. They waited till just about the the last second, got yeah. themselves a great deal on some lower level tickets. Hell yeah, through game time, and uh, had a great time outside of the final score of that game. Uh, game time app. Also, every time we go to the facility, we talk about our guy who's the old hip hop head and Howard Balzer. Uh, he's also churning out articles. Every time I go to the facility, there's another media member that's saying, Howard, great article. Great article. You got to check out his great work. Go phnx.com. It's, it's the best Cardinals content you're going to find. Like yep. you can find cookie cutter stuff all over the place and it's just going to move the chains as far as, you know, what's going on with the Arizona Cardinals. Not with Howard Balzer. He deep dives things. He looks at snap counts. He looks at trends. We're literally doing the show right now. He's texting us yeah. statistics he can't find anywhere else. What's the list bang? What, what, what did he put out in the text Okay, thread? so he, this is a text thread. Bo and I and Howard, he goes, in the two games last season, it was 38-0, to 0, 49ers in the second half. Arizona got out uh, turnover, the turnover margin, six to nothing. That's not good. You're not gonna get that anywhere else. <laughs> it's not good. And also, he's he, he's he's kind of figuring out who was in on on the hit on Tupac Shakur in I, the late nineties. Will that be incorporated in his most recent <laughs> article? You're just gonna have to check out to find more. Go phnx.com. That's right. And the phnx locker. Get this Greg Dorch T-shirt. Everybody, every time I wear mine, they're asking in the chat, "Where'd you get that dope T-shirt?" Well, I got it at the phnxlocker.com. The Greg Dorch T-shirt. Listen to the All Purpose Podcast. You watch the All Purpose Podcast. I see some of you referencing in the chat. Dorch can dunk. Yes, he can, but he's also got a fire t-shirt available for you right now. PHNXlocker.com. Topic 64. The ultimate friend of the program does not <laughs> stop with the Super Chats. That's why we love them. So let's talk about it. RTBs. We can't be getting burned missing tackles, <clears throat> Marco Wilson. Uh, I'm not calling out no names. I'll do that, though. Uh, <laughs> we got to get better. No yak, make tackles, uh, stickler in coverage. Let's go defensive backs. 
you think that was a fun film session for Marco Wilson? Some of those guys who missed tackles in the open field? I don't think so. Jalen Thompson, to me, is is one of the surefire tacklers. And, you know, Keetra Clark is getting better every week. That You cannot make mistakes this week. Because, again, where you're going to force mistakes is by ensuring that Brock Purdy's uncomfortable. You can't make him uncomfortable if they're having chunk plays and, and their drives, their scoring drives are like four or five plays long. Where Dallas had success last week was in between the 20s because the Cardinals missed tackles in the open field. Mm-hmm. Can't have that happen against San Francisco. They they will burn you. You won't even have a red zone possession. They'll house it. Kittle's unbelievable after the catch. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be physical out there. These receivers are big and physical. Regardless if Steve-O's out there, it looks like Ayuk's out there. George Kittle, we know he brings. No Juwan Jennings. Looks like he's ruled out for San Francisco. So if it's just Ayuk, potentially, not a deep wide receiver core, but no. regardless, you got to get him on the turf. I mean, that that's that's what they're coached up to do. They're, get the ball in their hand, make big plays, and they've done it so far uh, early here in, 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 well, during this 13-game win streak that they've had since they started the season three and four, which is astounding. Uh, you, you got to be able to, to to put them on the on the grass when you get your chance to doing it, and it's that's it's easier said than done. But Jonathan Gannon, Nick Rollis, they're going to preach that. They preach it all week through practice, and it's something that they they have to execute this week. I don't think enough is being talked about, Bo, the debut in the NFC West for Jonathan Gannon because mm-hmm. it's weird, right? He's like blast from the past. He's facing his old NFC cro- NFC East cronies each of the first three weeks, having good success. It's not like, okay, now you enter the big boy division. I know it was down last year in comparison to the NFC East, but it's like Kyle Shanahan, mm-hmm. Sean McVay, Pete Carroll, who's who potentially it's of Hall of Fame. As far yeah. As, yeah. And I, I for one, am a really anxious, even with, no pun intended, not playing with a full deck with this roster, no Kyler, no Buda Baker, how Jonathan Gannon does. Because yeah. everybody and their mom wants to annoy Kyle Shanahan, best coach in the NFL, best offensive mind. And I, Kyle Shanahan's really good at his job. But I think we've seen each of these first two weeks, like the Cardinals are winning in large part because schematics and coaching, in-game adjustment adjustments. Like I want to see, I want to see how Jonathan Gannon does against Kyle Shanahan with a team that is not as stacked, let's just call it, as he was in Philadelphia. Arizona Animal, uh, Marco Wilson takes worse angles. He's like Bo approaching JG. <laughs> uh, not not far off. Not far. You off. missed a tackle. Let's just call it that today. <laughs> Look, it was a it was a poor effort on my part, no doubt about it. We've got so much fun stuff planned. It all yep. starts this week, and we will again be live at the BetMGM Sportsbook at the Great Lawn at State Farm Stadium. Come hang out. We're giving away two tickets. Ooh. Cincy at Cardinals. Two tickets. All you got to do, you got to be in attendance this weekend for the watch party. We're going to announce the tickets on the post game show, I believe, Ball Brock. Myself, you, our guy BG, Britton Golden, Damon Dog. We're going to be out there. Bunch of PHNX Cardinals, PHNX Sports personalities. The Four Peaks will be flowing. The apps will be served for your boy, hopefully. And then Cincinnati Cardinals is on deck the following weekend. We got so much stuff coming up. We can't talk about it all right now. Uh, but this podcast, it's going to crank it up to 11 here pretty soon. October is a big month for yeah, your boys. Breaking the knob off. Can't turn it down. That's what's going on. And uh, you don't want to miss out on these are not just like nosebleed seats. These are legit seats that you're not going to miss out on. I think halftime might be the time when we're giving away those. Tickets. We're doing it at halftime. Yeah, so, wow. It's not a, it's not a full commitment as much as we want to hang out there. Just, just come out to the bed MGM, take in all the games that are going on, hang out with Johnny and myself. You wear one of these PHNX locker t-shirts, beers on us. You're getting a free brew plus a chance to win a pair of tickets to see the Cardinals take on Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. That's going to be a fun one. Johnny said uh, that BetMGM was the best place to get tickets, and he thought he was making a mistake, but he he's was, not wrong. He isn't wrong. I never make right. mistakes on this show <laughs> ever, Damon. How dare you? Damon, please don't. Don't give him an out on that. <laughs> he, just, he blew it. Just like I did today at the facility. I tried to make Bo feel better. You guys would make me feel better if you do (laughs) one thing and one thing only. Subscribe to the PHNX Cardinal Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Pick up your mobile phone, smart smart device, whatever you've got. Go into your podcast, find PHNX Cardinals, hit that subscribe, follow button. Give your boys a five-star review. Write a nice little write-up about the program, if you will. In the meantime, like this video. Subscribe to PHNX Sports. We are qu- quickly approaching 18,000 subscribers. Woo. Holy hell. We've got so much good stuff, good content on the way. Again, Diamondbacks pregame, postgame tonight, in route to hopefully <laughs> a birth in the postseason. How about it? Suns tip off preseason play in just a little over a week. 
You and I bet MGM this weekend with That's BG. Right. Can't wait. Find out all everything you want to know about this new look Suns team. And then, of course, the Diamondbacks. Hopefully locking it up. They're a tonight. wagon. Uh, it's all right here. PHNX Sports. And, of course, hockey season's right around the corner. That's as well. right. PHNX Coyotes. Don't miss out on any of it right here. PHNX Sports. Subscribe, like, set up alerts, and check out all of our podcasts wherever you find podcasts. Have a great Saturday. We'll talk to you Sunday. Thank you.